One of the most significant upgrades to the ROG Ally is Asus has added the option to turn your CPU boost on and off. This will allow you to run your ROG Ally at a much lower temperature and use less battery life. But is it really worth picking up one of these in 2024? Well, let's check out some of the updates they've released from listening to the community. So you can easily access your CPU boost by going into Armory Crate and then going over the settings and then go down to CPU boost on the side. Now I have mine set up here, but if you tap on it with your finger or hit A, it'll pop up and you can switch it out with something you're not using. And if I close this out, you can see in my command center on the left, I have it right here so I can turn that off or on. And that's so much easier than what we had to do before. So you can see, for example, if I have a game open and I have CPU boost set to on, my temperature is steady around 70 degrees and my battery is drawing around 30 watts and my APU wattage is at 23. But if I turn the CPU boost off, my temperature dropped down to around 52 degrees, my battery is only drawing 18 or 19 watts and my APU wattage is down to 12 watts. So it does make a significant difference and you can save a lot of battery and temperature. This real time monitor screen can also be moved around and they've got a change so that you can change it to minimal or row so that it just goes along the top. So you can customize that however you like, which is nice. Another significant update that people are excited about is gyro controls. You can calibrate this. A lot of games use that option and people are pretty excited about it. So I'm going to show you how to set it up. All you have to do is open up your armory crate, go to settings, and then go down to calibrate. Go over to gyro. And basically what you do is you lay this down on a flat surface. And you can see that mine are centered, but you can hit A to calibrate it. And it's a quick setup. So at the top you've got roll, which is horizontal left and right like this. Then you've got yaw, which is like a steering wheel for racing games. And then you've got pitch, which is vertical like that. Now if you want to use these for a game, just back out and find a game you want to use it for and go into your game profile. If you scroll down under your game profile, you'll see gyro. You can go into gyro behavior, so you can use it as your mouse, or your left stick, or your right stick. So I'd like to use it as an aimer, which is what a lot of people would use it for, so I use it as my right stick. Then you can change your advanced settings, but basically I don't want my gyro to be always on for a first person shooter. I want to hit my left trigger to bring up my sights and then use it to aim. So I'm going to select this menu and scroll down until I see left trigger. You also have some more options down below, such as turning on inverted horizontal axis or vertical axis. You can also fix dead zones and smoothing. So I can use my right stick to look around, right? But if I hit the left trigger, I can use my gyro to look around and shoot. And I just blew up a tank. <laughs> It's also worth noting that you can use these new gyro controls in emulators such as Wii. Now on the bottom right here, I'm going to open up the AMD software. And you can see under gaming and graphics, there's an option here for HyperRX. So what this will do is it'll use the best settings to optimize your game and get better performance out of it. But keep in mind, you might want to test this when you're using it with your games because it might not always be the best case scenario. Because it's using these different options available and it may actually slow down your game. Another thing they suggest if you're using this option is to lower your game resolution settings in game. And then this will be used to enhance the visual quality of the game up to whatever monitor you're using. The other options here are quality, which will improve latency and enhance the visual quality for your game. Then you've got power settings, which will obviously reduce your power consumption and it'll reduce your temperature and your noise. But what you might want to do if you're testing out your games is to use the default option. And then under here, you can select whatever you want to use and test it with your games and see what works best. There's been a GPU update since my last video. In Armory Crate, if you go to your settings, go down to operating mode. And over on the right, you have a full list between auto and all the way up to 8 gigs. So it's so much easier to customize this how you want it. Just keep in mind, if you do select something different, you'll have to restart. You also have access to all these options. But keep in mind, if you do use some of these, it might affect your game performance. If you go down to Eco Assist, you can also access your CPU boost here. On the top you have extreme standby mode. So this is just something you might want to turn on if you're in handheld mode and you're trying to save some battery. And it claims to have a better battery life than the modern standby mode. 
you now have an option to choose 900p resolution. So that's between 720 and 1080p. Now some of you notice my settings in these videos such as my refresh rate or if I have RSR on, but if you can take advantage of 120 hertz refresh rate, definitely do it. And RSR will help your games upscale much better. Another option that they added which I love is this end task button. So if you have a window open, instead of messing around trying to get task manager open, just tap this and hit close and then it's gone. It's so easy. You can access this another way if you want to. If you hold down on your command center button, you'll get the Windows prompt that gives you different options here. And if you hold down on your armory crate button, it'll show you what all your controls are for your device. Now this might be a little bit of an older piece of advice. You probably already know that they have released support for third-party docs. For example, I reviewed this Ivanki dock and it works perfect with my ROG Ally. This is my daily use now. I'll have the link to the Ivanki dock down in the description. So is it worth picking up one of these? Well, if you're a fan of Windows PC gaming, definitely, because I've been using this since June and it's only improved and they've obviously been listening to the community and releasing awesome updates for it. If you found these tips helpful, I do have a full playlist with ROG Ally videos and other handheld gaming devices you might be interested in.